Okay, in today's video, we're going to have a look at how you can automate HDR images from bracketed shots. So I did a video previously about exposure bracketing, and I'll link that up, up above for anybody that hasn't seen it. So it will probably make more sense if you watch that video first, and then you can kind of come back to this. But essentially, this is just a video to cover how I would do automated um, HDR photos from those exposure brackets on quite a quick turnaround. So generally for my post-processing for photos, I'm using Lightroom, uh, but for this specifically to automate them, you'll have to use Lightroom Classic. So in this video, we're gonna be using Lightroom Classic rather than the traditional version of Lightroom. So um, if you've got a Creative Cloud suite, it, it's probably, you know, if you use it for photography, you probably quite likely got this version downloaded, but if you don't have Lightroom Classic downloaded, just click on it, download it, and then you can jump into this part of the video. So essentially what I've done is just pulled in uh, a load of shots from, uh, it's from an auction property. It was a really quick turnaround. It just had to kind of go up, just a you know, vacant property looking to go up for auction quickly. So the um what i did with the shots were just uh take off the bracketed shots i had and throw them straight into lightroom classic so i've got um you can see on here i've got 210 shots that i've imported and they're in brackets of seven so you can probably just about see top row here one to seven they're all just the same shot at different um exposures done by my camera same on the second row, that shot's been taken again, but that's fine, I'll just export both of those just for the purposes of this video. Same again on here, there's a couple of the same shot in, in brackets of seven. You know, you might do yours in brackets of three, brackets of five, you know, different to how I'm doing them, but that's how I've done them, just so you know sort of how this is gonna go together. So what you wanna do first off, once you've got everything imported and you're happy everything's there, you can either click on the first one and the last one holding down shift and that will select all of them or you can unselect them again or you can do uh, command and A or control and A if you're on a PC, command and A if you're on a Mac and that will just select everything. And then once you've got everything, just make sure everything's highlighted like it is here, right click. And then what we're gonna do is go to the stacking option and then you can see in this option, we've got auto stack by capture time. And just quickly, actually, before we do that, um, what I will say is we've got um, 210 shots. And as I said, I've done them in brackets of seven. So to work that out quickly, we should end up with um, 30 bracketed shots. So we'll just come back again quickly to where we were. So stack in, auto stack by capture time. And what this essentially is doing is you select the time up here by moving the slider and it's essentially saying um, the shots 10 seconds apart will be stacked or the shots 37 seconds apart you know in this one will be stacked and as i say i know how many mine should have you know it's just a simple you know simple to work out it's just uh essentially the number of shots divided by you know the the amount you've got in each um, exposure comp so y you know what you should be ending up with and you can see you know if you drag the slider at <laughs> one stack because it's 28 apart too far um you've got 18 stacks there at like 47 again there's not not enough there if you do it in some awkward ways like too far down usually yeah you'll end up with unstacked images which obviously isn't right so 57 stacks i mean we can do this just for example just click stack and then you end up with stacks of four three two five it's you know it's all over the place it's not right so if you do it wrong all you've got to do is hit command and z on a mac control and z on a pc and then it just take you back and everything will be unstacked again and what we'll do is I will stack them properly. Uh, so we're about here somewhere, about 10 seconds, nine seconds. You can see we've got 30 stacks. And then you can see every single one is a stack of seven is up here if you can't see it. Um, and you can you can sort of jump into stacks and view what's in there. So if you think images have ended up in the wrong stacks, you can um, you can quite easily just kind of check what's in there. And you can always right click on them, go back to stacking, and you can actually unstack them and restack them again. So it's not a problem. So it's, uh, 
yeah you, you can easily just go back and do that um but yeah so now we've got 30 stacks of seven which is correct and the next thing we want to do is automate the hdrs so what i do for that is to highlight them and then we right click on them and you can see we've got this option in here for photo merge and then you can click hdr and then what will happen is you can see it's added those tasks and then quite often at the top there we go if you just hover over the top bar it's kind of this thin bar here you can see we've got 30 operations in progress and that's essentially just doing the um doing those hdr exports and they're going to export out in the same folder that you drag them in as but the um, shots will be prefixed which we can have a quick look at here so uh, you can see in each stack of seven we're ending up with a hdr dng so we've got them coming out into there and there should be yeah another one popping into there and these shots by no means are going to be perfect what i do is i then take these shots and then i'll drop those 30 shots into lightroom quickly go in make a few tweaks and then from there, you know, that's where I get my final image. So you, you're probably going to have to play a little bit with uh, possibly white balance levels. You know, it's it's not going to be perfect, but, um, you know, it's going to do things like bring some uh, bring some detail into the windows and, you know, you, you'll get a bit of a, a better dynamic range in those images. It's probably also worth mentioning um, if you're shooting in quite dark environments and the exposure times are quite long, you'll need to compensate for that in your workflow. So, um, you know, if they're going to take a long time for certain shots, like say you're doing walk-in wardrobes, closets, that type of thing, boiler cabinets, um, you, you'll end up essentially um, having to compensate for that or those shots will end up in, um, in different stacks. So this whole thing really just relies on um, your workflow up front. So, you know, if you're going to do it, just make sure that um, let's say you take one shot of a living room and then you realize like maybe your verticals aren't straight and then you sort of redo the tripod, shoot it again really quickly. That could potentially mess up your stack. So you've just got to remember if you're going to take two shots really close together, you either delete the first one or you wait the kind of adequate time for you to be able to um, do it as auto stack at the end. Um, it can be quite tedious deleting bracketed photos in camera, you know, especially if you're doing as many as seven, which you probably won't be. But um, yeah, it can be a bit of a pain. So um, yeah, you just got to not get frustrated by it. Just wait that time. And then you know when you get to this stage, it's just going to be so much easier because it's essentially, you know, it's almost doing it doing it for you at this point. You can see the um, the exposures are coming into Lightroom now. So we've got our HDR there, HDR there. Uh, oh, actually, sorry. Hey, uh, yeah, HDR there, HDR there. You can tell like the, um, we've still got the stacked ones and then we've got the, the actual ones there. So as I say, they're not going to be perfect um but they're generally you know somewhere near decent where if they're outside photos you've got a decent amount of sky and you know good good kind of um uh, a good amount of dynamic range in there and then to be honest once um as i say you know it takes a while for it to go through these you can see um we were doing 30 so it's nearly halfway through now um this is kind of time where I just let it go once I know everything's in there and I'm happy with it I'll just go off make a cup of tea let this happen and as I say you can see these in here and you can always once they're done um, what I do is just grab them all throw them into a HDR folder and then I'll just bring them back into Lightroom, usually into the normal version of Lightroom, and I'll just tweak them a little further and you kind of end up with, um, yeah, you, you can sort of push it to the images you want. And as I say, this is not, um, I, I wouldn't say it's a perfect way to, to work with it by any means, but for a very fast turnaround, it, it does just give you, you know, passable HDR shots where you've not had to put loads of time into it and off the back end of it you know you just go there do the shots get back do the um do the kind of uh do the stacking do the um hdr batch and then as i say once it's out 
a few tweaks and you know you could potentially have this done in in an hour so it's um it's a really quick turnaround time for it for more expensive properties obviously you've you're going to have to put more um more time and effort into each shot it's not going to be as as quick and easy as this but um it's just for me i find this a very good workflow for for those quick turnaround projects where the, the client wants it right now and you know you haven't got a lot of time to a get there and shoot it and b edit the photos but hopefully this has been useful if it has give the video a like uh, if you've got any questions feel free to leave them in the comments and uh, if you want to see more content like this then please subscribe